There are three main ways to animate directly in RenPy. It's transitions, defined images, and animation statements. And to decide which one of these you want to use for any given situation, you kind of need to keep this old adage in mind. You can have it fast, cheap, or good. Choose two. Which animation technique correlates to what? Stick around and find out. Now, if you watched the first video in the series, you'll already know a little bit about transitions. Basically, you can take any image and say with blank to apply a predefined transition that will determine how it will change the image from its previous location to the next. The RenPy documentation has a list of the transitions you have available to you, notably pixelate, move, move in right, move in left, zoom out, zoom in, H punch, squares, iris in. I mean, just a bunch of these things. Check them out yourself. Most importantly, though, you can make customized transitions and you want to do this. All these things take like half a second or a whole second, which feels too long for most cases. The easiest way to fix this is when you call a transition, put the time you want the transition to take in seconds in parentheses like this. Let's say you wanted your character to move around the screen in a way that these predefined transitions don't really cover. Well, in that case, you're going to want to set up your own customized transition. and It is way easier than you think it is. So let's say you wanted to make your characters pop out from the bottom left corner. We can use a custom transition. First, we're going to define the bottom left corner using a custom transform. Transforms, as you know, are just a way to designate a series of attributes you're applying to an image. The most common default transforms are left, right, and center, but you can set your own like this. Now that we've defined where we want our sprite to start from, we can use it in our custom transition definition. So in this case, we'll use a move transition function to define the new transition. Here, we want to specify how long it takes to do the transform with delay here, where the sprite enters from when you show it, and where it leaves when you hide it, which we're using with enter and leave here. And we'll also use a time warper. Warpers are a function that lets us designate how something moves over time. By default, if you want something to move from one area to the next in this code, we'd use a linear warper. This moves things evenly over time from one area to another. If we wanted it to just pop from one area to another, we'd use the pause warp. If you wanted to make it seem more organic, starting slow, going fast, then slowing down, then we'd use ease. We can also use ease in and ease out to make things start fast, then move slow, or go slow, then move fast. There are tons of warpers you can choose from, but honestly, you're mostly just going to use these five. Anyway, put that code in, and you'll see the characters moving in from the lower left, then exits to the same place. Now I would consider animating with the transitions fast and cheap, but not good. And it's not because it's bad, it just, we'll go over the pluses and minuses. Now why am I considering this cheap and fast but not good? Well transitions are great for standardized animations that get applied to many different sprites and images. Even if you're taking an hour to make a custom transition, you may be using it hundreds of times over the course of a game. But it's not really that good. Since this is a standardized animation that's meant to apply to a lots of different assets, you're not meant to get pixel perfect with it. Although there are many unique animation effects available to you with transitions, you're not going to be able to do as much as you can with individual images. For that, we'd want to define an animation. Well, let's say we had a character and we wanted to show them running in a frame-by-frame -frame animation. We would define the image by saying image followed by the name we want to give it, and then a colon. Then we designate the first image we want to use. Put down a warper, which in this case is going to be pause 0.2, and then the next image in the sequence until they're all listed out. Then to repeat the animation, we'd say repeat, and that will infinitely repeat that whole sequence. Now we can just call that animation like any other image. Now let's say we wanted to jump for that character. We're going to use this animation statement, which says that this block of code is using an animation time base. We can take one of these running frames, Define the starting position and then have it ease out to change the offset, then ease in back to the default position. Just as a reminder, we're using offset here instead of X position, Y position, or X anchor, Y anchor for pretty much this exact situation, just to make sure that we're never overriding that positional data. We can use another animation block if we want the character to change foot position as they jump forward with another image, and then we'll just repeat the whole thing. And just a quick little note here, if we use an animation block, then any default transforms or transitions that utilize transforms, they're going to override this definition statement. So if you need to change the position of this animation, you'll have to set your own transforms. Now, let's say we had a running character, but they're also running while they're jumping, and the runs on a 0 0.8 second loop, and the jumps on a 1 second loop. Uh, who am I going to be able to do that? The parallel statement. RenPy. There's a statement for that. We just put the first animation under parallel, 
then the second animation under another parallel, and now the animation will do both things at once. Obviously, we don't want transforms to override each other, but as long as you use different transforms in each of these statements, you'd still be in good shape. Now, I consider defining images in animation as cheap and good, but not fast. I consider this cheap and good, but not fast, because once you have an animated image, you're basically treating it like a new sprite, which can be used again and again, even in conjunction with transitions, if you're careful. It's good because this is one step away from setting up animations in dedicated software, but it's not exactly fast. But for fast and good, and personally my favorite of the methods, we're going to have to go with animation statements. And it is going to be quick. You're basically defining a transform right under the show statement. Put down the starting coordinates, then you put down a warper, how long you want the transition to last, then the ending coordinates. Add as many lines as you want, like in defining animations, it's that quick. Oh wait, except it gets easier. Okay, so we're going to show our image at reset. That's just going to give us a whole bunch of default values that our handy dandy action editor can use. Remember that from the images video? We can do the animation statements right in here. Just set how you want the asset to start, which exposition zero is fine. Then we're going to move this animation bar to 0 0.3 seconds. And then we put in Eileen's ending position. That looks good there. Press the space bar to run through the animation. Looks good to me. Now we press clipboard and there. Animation done in just a few seconds. Now the best part about this process being so quick and easy is that you can put a bit of mustard on there. Like let's say we wanted to move a character from one side of the screen to the other, but really bump it up a notch. We'll move them as normal. So from exposition 0, 0 0.3, move her over here. But then we'll do some squash and stretch, making sure they don't go past this invisible line here. There, got that done in like a minute. Now I consider this fast and good, but it is not cheap. On one hand, you can do simple animations really fast and on the fly, especially with the action editor. But if you wanted to reuse the animation with this method efficiently, it involves you writing your own call function for it. And at that point, you might as well just define an animation or a custom transition on your own. Now at this point, you might be saying, no, that's animation really. Like I want to learn animation, like how to make your characters move around. When it comes to animating complicated sprites and characters, uh, 3D objects, large scale particle effects, or long frame by frame animations, you should design and animate in your software of choice and export it as an MPEG, AVEG file, or other format that RenPy supports. Once you do though, the exported animation can be treated just like a regular image, and you can apply all these same animation techniques. For instance, I have characters I made in Live 2D, and using a customized transition, I can move them around the screen. You'll even notice a little blur effect there. And by using a lot of customized animation statements, I can make this character move around in 3D space. So when you're planning animations in RenPy, it's worth looking at all the different options available to you, the pros and cons of each of them. And hmm? Oh yeah, that thing where he's like walking around, that thing I planted. So you'll like and subscribe below so you can see how you can do it. Cause I'll tell you how to do it. It's a couple more videos from now, but you know, I'll show you how to do it. So yeah, just like and subscribe.